Hitboxes are one of the more common terms thrown around when people talk about video game mechanics, but how much do you actually know about how hitboxes work? First of all, let's just get one thing out of the way. In many cases, hitboxes aren't even boxes at all. In short, a hitbox is a simple shape used to detect some form of real-time collision in a video game. This could be determining whether a punch lands in a fighting game, if a headshot connects in a first-person shooter, or whether or not you just barely dodged that fatal blow in a Souls-style game. When people are casually discussing hitboxes, an often overlooked aspect is the difference between hitboxes and hurtboxes. These terms are often used interchangeably, but they serve two different functions. The goal of a hitbox is to deal damage as opposed to hurtboxes that receive damage. As games became more advanced and moved into the realm of 3D space, hitboxes and hurtboxes could closely mimic the geometry or form of a character or asset. It's less of an invisible box around the character and and more like an invisible, character-shaped mesh. If you played GoldenEye 64 back in the day, there was always that one friend who picked Oddjob. Well, Oddjob's hurt box was half the size of all the other characters in the game, making him harder to hit. That basic principle still exists today in modern hero shooters. The larger size of a character's hurt box in a game like Overwatch or Apex Legends could be balanced out by giving the character more health, armor, or abilities. In fact, a lot of players are usually intrigued or perplexed when they discover the actual shape of a hitbox in a game because developers usually determine the shape of a hitbox based on gameplay rather than reality or perception. The shape and size of hitboxes and hurtboxes can make all the difference between moments in a game that feel exhilarating versus ones that might be perceived as cheap or unfair. Shooters can be a little tricky in this realm because then we have to talk about the concept of hitscan, which is honestly its own video topic, but Basically, what people refer to in a shooter as a hitbox is probably actually a hurtbox. Bullets in modern shooters don't have hitboxes in a traditional sense because bullets with collision detection aren't spawned into the game world every time a player fires a gun. Instead, shooters use a method called hitscan to project an invisible ray from a weapon, and when that ray hits or intersects with a player, damage is dealt. This is different from how hitboxes and hurtboxes work in something like a platformer or a fighting game because the two boxes have to physically interact for damage to happen. What probably makes this even more confusing is that shooters do have hitboxes, but they're just used for things like grenades, explosions, and you know even vehicle damage. Analyzing the way hitboxes and hurtboxes interact with each other within a game is commonly referred to as frame data. Fighting game pros traditionally categorize frame data for specific character moves into three categories. The startup, or the wind-up animation, the active phase, in which a hitbox is activated and can do damage, and lastly, the recovery phase, in which a character attack animation returns to a neutral state in which a player can input another command. It sounds complex and tiresome to commit to memory, but every game with a hitbox has frame data, and frame data analysis isn't just for fighting game fans or pros. All sorts of different games have different uses for this type of information, and all sorts of different players are analyzing frame data subconsciously all the time. Yes, even you, dearest viewer. Sure, speedrunners could use the exact knowledge about the size of a hitbox to perfect a run, but if you ever took too many swings at an enemy in a game and instantly knew you were going to get punished for it, you were actually just internalizing frame data about hitboxes relative to your hurtbox, which is information you could use and share with others the next time you play. Also, game developers are constantly thinking about how to optimize hitboxes and hurtboxes to make games more fun. So the next time you're struggling with a boss or having trouble with a section in a game, stop and think about how hitboxes are being used in that experience. You'll probably collide with a few good ideas about how to play in a completely new way. 